grab a seat and if you've got a Bible you can grab it and open it to uh, the book of, or the, rather the letter of 1 Corinthians, which if you know your Bible, you'll know that about two thirds of the way through, you'll find the New Testament, which starts with Matthew, uh, and then you've got a few, uh, a few Gospels, uh, followed by the letters of Paul, which is ever so briefly followed by a letter written by someone that we don't know the name of, but we think it might be Paul, but it's more likely Priscilla, but you're not supposed to say that a woman wrote one of the letters of the Bible, um, so we won't say that out loud, Priscilla. Anyhow, um, and then after that, you've got some other letters from other writers, Peter, John, Jude, uh, James, and, uh, and John again, actually, as it happens. Um, tonight we're going to be reading from one of Paul's letters, the first letter to the Corinthians. Um, I'd love to teach you some theology, um, but I'm not going to teach you some heart stuff. Um, let me just first of all say, though, that actually some theologians, uh, if can I just say, explain the word theologians, as people that study God, and study his word and, uh, and go to university, some of us, and we, we get a degree in this. That's what I did. And some theologians would say that um, the Corinthians had three letters written to them and that the order of it actually goes letter 3, 1, 2. So actually, the second half of 1 Corinthians is actually 1 Corinthians. The first half is 3 Corinthians. But who knew? Crazy, eh? It's all a bit backwards, but never mind. Um, we're going to be reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 6 in a few seconds. But before we go there, let me tell you about some great stuff that we have at Ignite Church. So, um, so we have a festival, not a festival, a conference, a holiday that we share as family called Urban Wave. Um, and to be honest with you, sometimes um, people come up to me and they say, Darren, I feel like a bit of an outsider at church sometimes. And I say, get yourself to Urban Wave, because that's where outsiders become insiders. That's where everyone starts to gel together as a community. And it's an amazing week. And this year we've got some great, great speakers. Um, probably, um, it's really interesting, there's a guy called Daniel Chand. Um, who is currently doing a round. He seems to be all over the place at the moment. God Telly, TBN, is on all the TV channels and doing all that sort of stuff. He's been all over Europe and preaching all over the place. And, and Daniel um, is going to be with us for a whole week. Um, we're really, really lucky, actually, to get him for a whole week because I think we caught him just before we sort of made that jump to God Telly. And that a bonus, I know. So we get, like, top quality uh, for, 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 well, for Urban Wave, which is... Interesting, we, uh, we always struggle to bring in the really big names, but, um, you know, Daniel Chandler, I reckon, is one of, one of the big boys for the future, so that's good news, isn't it? He's probably a big boy now, really. But anyway, Urban Wave, if you're interested, is the 13th of August to the 17th of August. We have caravans, um, so you don't have to sleep in a tent, which is a bonus, isn't it? Um, and, uh, and in each caravan, there is a shower, which means you don't all have to share the same shower. Isn't that really good news? Now you're thinking, now this isn't a festival. You're right, it's not a normal festival. It's a clean one where people smell good. Yes, come on. And so we, uh, so we have uh, beds that are ready. We have double beds for £50 for five days. We have single beds for £35 for five days. Now that £35 includes your bed only, which is essentially a cheap holiday if you want to come. Um, however, um, if you are an adult, i.e. you're over 18 years old, then, um, then you'll need to pay an extra £10 for the actual conference, which is where all the speakers are going to be in. They have church every day. Isn't that so good? Yeah. Church every day. We start off the week all hyped up, then we get smashed by Jesus, and then we finish the week really tired. Uh, which is going to be really cool, but we do it every year, and it's lovely, and people meet with God. I think it was, was it Lindsay last year? I think every speaker that came in prophesied over Lindsay, and she must have been absolutely messed by the end of the week. I think she was. I think she actually made a current apologies, which is amazing, isn't it? So, um, so that's cool. Um, so Urban Wave is on the 13th to the 18th of August, 17th of August. If you don't already have tickets or a bed, then see Laura and, um, and she will sort you out. If you're watching online, then you can email us, go to our website. You can even book your tickets through our website. Our lovely new website has lots of little bonus features on it. You can book loads of stuff on it, um, including another one which we have in November, the 3rd of November, called Sexy Times Conference. As you can guess, it's just for over 18s, and Donna is really interested. Um, oh, no. no. <laughs> Oh, I know. Sorry, did I embarrass you? You're all right. Not really. <laughs> but 
It's for over 18s. There will be a bar and we will be speaking about actual sex. I know, it's crazy, eh? Uh, in church as well. So that's for a whole day on the 3rd of November. So please, even if you're not married, uh, you're welcome to come because, you know, you need to get these skills. Uh, in the showroom, I know. And we've got what, like, the best venue in town for it. It's going to be wonderful. We've got a worship leader for the whole day as well. And um, we've got it, like, live worship. We've got guest speakers from, from London, Birmingham. And Laura's going to be speaking, uh, which is good news. Laura's like, you what now? Yeah, babe, your, your image is all on the website. It's too late to pull out now. Uh, hallelujah. Okay, so that's stuff that's happening. Yes. There's a prayer station on our website. I'm not sure whether you've seen that, um, but you can go. Our website is like really interactive. We have a news feature where there's blogs and stuff. If you want to learn more about God and the things of God, things about leadership and stuff, um, I'll put a couple of leadership blogs on there as well. And um, and then there's a prayer station where you can make prayer requests and then respond to people's prayer requests by praying for them and letting them know that you're praying for them and all that sort of stuff. It's ever so good. Um, that's that is the website. Um, the only other thing that I think I should mention just now um, that's coming up is I have another guest speaker um, coming all the way over from New Zealand. I oh, know, crazy. An amazing guy who's really, really into uh, healing and, uh, and, and he's got a really great ministry. He, he needs to have a great ministry to get flights from New Zealand to the UK and he does it all the time. So, so we managed to catch him whilst he's here. Isn't that good news? Yeah, bonus, not too much money. Whoa! Brilliant. So, um, so those guys are going to be with us uh, on, uh, I think it's the 2nd of May. Um, I will put more details on the church community group uh, if you'd like to uh, join in with that as well. Is that alright? Hallelujah. Now, I have a word from God, I really do believe. Um, let me share this with you. So this is 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19. The Bible says, this is Paul speaking, the Apostle Paul. Uh, who has a wonderful story about how he came to know Jesus, uh, but we'll do that another day. Um, do you know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, whom you have received from God? Did you know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit? Have you ever thought, what does that mean? Well, some preachers, certainly when I first became a Christian, would say, Darren, your temple, I mean, your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Thus, you shouldn't smoke. Yeah? You just don't want a dirty God's temple. That's not it. Yeah? You don't want to like, make the Holy Spirit smoke with you as well, do you? And all that sort of stuff. So some people would talk about, talk about that sort of stuff. And they would say, you know, certainly the Corinthians uh, had a big problem with, like, with like um, having sinful relationships at the same time as they were speaking in tongues in church and making out they were uber spiritual and really, really good. And so Paul is essentially saying to them, actually, your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit indwells you. And thus, when you, uh, when you uh, like sin, it's your dirtiness on the inside that is coming out of you when you sin and not the dirtiness making your dirty uh, your, your body dirty. Does that make sense? So you don't make the Holy Spirit dirty when you do something naughty. Yeah? Yeah? Instead it's your wrongness, your badness, your your humanness, your your your, your sinful nature, your fleshiness that is coming out and making your body dirty. Does that make sense? Yeah? However, rather than focusing on the sin side of stuff, which we can do every day if we want, don't we? We can talk about sin all day long. However, um, we're going to talk about the fact that um, in that we are indwelled by God. We are indwelled by God. What does it mean to be indwelled by God? Well, did you know that if you have, in fact the scripture says, that you have the same spirit within you, the same power in you, that raised Christ from the dead. Did you know that the bonus of our Christian faith is Jesus rising from the dead? Um, for a long time, I've misunderstood this. I've struggled with it. I've, um, I've, I've not quite understood why, why did Jesus have to raise from the, the, raise from the grave? Why, why is that so important to our faith? What's it all about? Well, here's the thing. The Bible says that Jesus had the power and the ability to lay down his life and to pick it back up again. So that power that raised Jesus from the dead 
He then passes on to me and you as believers, meaning that we are the face of God on earth. We are the power of God on earth. Does that make sense? Which means that if God wants someone to get healed today, who's he relying on? You're well loved. It's me and you. And not the preacher, by the way. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm here and I, I speak this stuff. And, and, and believe me, when I say I do it as well, I do that stuff. I really, really do. Even today, I've spoken some what I would call words of prophecy. It's the gift of the Holy Spirit. It's the Spirit's power in me, sometimes even, to speak things into the future. I don't think we quite understand what that means. The Spirit of God in me and in you today allows you to be able to speak God's words into your future. So the Bible says, whatever you bind up on earth will be bound up in heaven. Whatever you loose in heaven will be loosed on earth. Yeah? So if we want to have something for the future, if you totally and utterly understand this very scripture, we are indwelled by the Spirit of God, if we understand that and know the secrets and the, and the power in that, if we get it, if we really get it and have the faith for that, then we can speak future into our lives. We can speak goodness into our future. We can speak prosperity into our future. We can speak God moments into our future. Um, sometimes I joke and I say, has anybody ever gone up to traffic lights and told the traffic lights to change now when they do at that moment in time? And, and that's just a, a little tiny uh, little way in which we can speak into the future. You know that speaking into the future, right? But there's so much more that we can do when we, when we have the Spirit of God living within us. We can, we can heal people. Um, it's, it's really interesting because the Bible um, talks of the gifts of healing. Um, interestingly, it's the gifts of healing, not the gift of healing. So, so as a believer, you don't have the gift of healing. Did you know that? I know, you're like, what? But the Bible says we have the gifts of healing. Yeah, the gifts with an S. You don't have, I'm not a healer. I have the gifts sometimes of little healings here and there. But I won't ever be released into that gift unless I first put my hands on people to pray for them. You understand? So it takes faith to step out in order to see the power of God that is in us to be released out into the public, into the, into the realm of kingdom on earth. Does that make sense? You all, you all keeping up with me all right? Yeah? You all right? <laughs> The Spirit, of God, the Spirit of God dwells within us, okay? And we have the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead within us. We have the same power, we have the same Godness. We have, so, so here's the thing. Earlier on I mentioned expectations. If you're not sure of what's expected of you as a believer, then like I say, if you are indwelled by God, if you are born again, then you're a new creation. And so, because you are indwelled by God, you're a new creation, the things that come out of you should be godly. They shouldn't be of the flesh, of the world, of the enemy. In fact, if you're truly saved, and if you're truly indwelled by God, then... You should be going from one degree of glory to another, is what the Bible says. So you, you start somewhere around here and you go, okay, you know what, I'm going to do this in order to be more like Jesus. And then you go from one step to another, like stepping stones, into a place where eventually um, you live out all of the expectations as a Christian. Uh, but one, Just one of which, which is you show the power that you already have in you. You are not here today, sitting here, Powerless. Did you know that? You have the power within you. You have God in you. If you believe in Jesus today, you've accepted him as your saviour, and you've accepted that he is your sacrifice for all the stuff you've ever done wrong, then the Bible says you have the spirit in you. So there's no reason not to show that power, to be that power. It's really interesting because um, your Leanne earlier on, Wandering around church, like praying for everybody. It's like, what is. I feel like, just go on one. I was like, wow, Pastor Leanne just going crazy in the Lord, praying for everybody, probably speaking words of prophecy over people. And, 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 I, and we all know that she prayed before and God has healed people because she has gifts of healing. And that's amazing, isn't it? And there's other young people that do other stuff, and, 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 and there's older people, you know. Um, I always come back to that story when everyone. When everyone's trying to explain what it means to have the Spirit of God within you, I always come back to the story of young Paris. You remember Paris, a young lad, he's like 12 years old at the time, and, um, and we're sitting in life group, there's about five or six of us blokes, and um, 
And Paris, um, as we go around, we're saying, okay, we're going to pray for people. And a couple of weeks before, I think it was a couple of weeks before, we'd done a bit of a prophecy workshop in youth. And, um, and Paris um, turns around and says, or it might have been in a different life group, Paris turns around and it's his turn to pray for Malcolm. And Malcolm's like 65 years old and Paris is like 12. And, um, and Paris doesn't know Malcolm from Adam, you know. Like, he didn't know anything about his life. And, um, and, and Paris starts praying for Malcolm. He says, Lord, I pray that, um, that Malcolm won't be scared of falling down the stairs and hurting his knee again. And then Malcolm just goes, what? How did you know that that happened? Jane doesn't even know that because I was scared to tell her in, in case she got scared and upset. His own wife didn't even know this. And he goes, where did you find this out? And Paris turns around and says, Jesus told me. <laughs> and it's like, what? Unbelievable. And then from that point on, he was like trying to prophesy over everybody, wasn't he? He just loved it. He loved knowing that he had the spirit of God indwelling him. And so do you today. Don't ever be afraid of opening your mouth and, and praying for people, praying for healing, you know, inviting people to church, inviting people into the presence of God and, and, and praying for them, prophesying over them. You know, we can train you in that stuff and you can move in that. But in order for you to move in that, to see that power coming out of you first, you need to actually speak something out. You need to act in faith. You need to release it from within. Is that all right? Let's move on before I... Get all samey. Number two, another thing about the temple of God. So the temple had God's spirit dwelling in it. Okay, so God dwelt in the temple of God. Another thing that happened in the temple of God was worship. The temple of God was made for worship. You were made for worship. And you might be thinking, yeah, that's what we just did. Um, There's a song I think we sang earlier on this morning. He said, I will lose myself in worship. I think it was da- David, the, the King David, who lost it in worship and got naked and ran down the street and uh, like naked dancing before the Ark of God. And, um, and interestingly, his, his ex-enemy's daughter and his wife, I think it was Milka, um, is, is that what Milka? Um, he, his wife, um, Saul's daughter, <coughs> as she sees it happening, she turns around to him. She's got this mindset. And the mindset is, his Milka's mindset. I want a life that looks like this. I want a husband who helps me to have a life that looks like this. I want to be politically correct. I want to be, um, I want to be respected. I want to have a life that is that is a certain way inclined and then my husband goes dancing down the street naked and so she has a go at him and she moans at him and she says don't you ever do that again do you not see that all of the women of Israel saw you in your underpants and he turns around and says the words and yet I'll be even more undignified for the Lord. Interestingly, um, she became barren. God didn't let her have any babies. Um, from that point on, the Bible says. It's interesting, isn't it? That because she was more bothered in what she looked like instead of worshipping God, God didn't give her the desires of her heart. Interesting, eh? But we are built for worship. We are built for worship. And worship isn't just singing a song on a Sunday. Worship isn't just, you know, sometimes it is, you know, paying your tithes and offerings. Sometimes it's doing stuff with your hands. And there's lots of other ways that we can worship God. You know, just spending some time in his presence, praying and and meditating on his word. All those things are worship. But, but true worship is when we forget ourselves and only have God in mind. And we are able to lose ourselves. Was it Eminem? Lose yourself in the moment. I don't know. I can't wrap to save my life. Lose yourself in the moment. That is true worship. To forget about the world around you. Forget what you sound like. I'm going to be honest with you. Down there, I'm glad no one else was near me. I, I, I sounded more like a rock star. Like, like that. As I was singing, my voice is just on the way out. And so I couldn't sing to save my life. So I'm really sorry if any of you guys heard me. But it was never going to stop me. I was just in the zone. 
I just love God so much. I want to give him everything. Everything. He can have it all. I'm not interested in what I look like. He can have the lot. And that's what we're built for, worship. Your temple of God, the temple is made for worship. Finally, finally, and this is the Holy Spirit one. Are you ready for this? I think it's all Holy Spirit stuff, but this one's the one which I particularly felt God wanted me to say today. Are you ready? The temple of God was a place of sacrifice. you like, oh, that's really good. Yeah, I feel like God told me it. It's not my own. The temple of God is a place of sacrifice. You are called to make sacrifices in your life. You're expected to make sacrifices. It could be that the sacrifice is, I'm going to sacrifice my relationship with this group of people in order to follow God. Yeah? yeah. That's okay. Um, personally, I'd rather you carry on being friends with sinners. Yeah? Just because then those sinners might get something of what you've got. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right, yeah? Hey, Donnie, you're an evangelist. Have you noticed that? You need to be around sinners, yeah, yeah, you need to be around sinners. Don't do what they do, you know, tell them about Jesus. Okay. Yeah? I'll make my new resolution. Yeah, 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 well, don't wait until 2019, eh? Yeah. yeah. So, it might be, though, is that in order for, let's put it this way, if you are quite weak-willed, then you might need to stop, you know, and if you're into a bit of this, you might need to stop hanging around with the lads that go down a pub, yeah? All right? However, if you're quite strong-willed and you're more of a leader in your group and all that sort of stuff and your friends are all going to Anne Summers parties and all that sort of stuff, uh, you could say, hey, I'm not going to come to the Anne Summers party, but shall we do some better wear? <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else been to a better wear party? No, no, no. 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 <laughs> I remember, I can't remember who was it who used to do better wear when I was a kid. I think it was like my mum used to do better and my auntie Paula used to. Uh, did we do better wear? I don't <laughs> Uh, uh, I remember once I did like about five days of deliveries and then I thought five quid is not worth all that work, you know what I mean? I'm doing that again. Anyhow, you know, you can you can you can direct your friends down the path of God. Um, you can invite them to this place. Hopefully, hopefully this place isn't so scary that you can't invite your friends here. Because we try to make this place so welcoming to people that don't know Jesus yet. You know, and, and if you think, hey, actually, Darren, um, tonight wasn't quite um, welcoming to my friends. Um, I'd feel a bit embarrassed to bring them tonight. They need to come and have a chat with me and say, actually, there's something that he could have taken out of the service and put something else in his place uh, for me to bring my friends. And I will do that happily. I will happily do that. If you say, Dazza, you know, maybe you're the issue. Um, can you get someone else to preach? Laura can preach next week. You know, and you know, you should have a pretty face up here instead. It'd be a wonderful moment. Just so that you can bring your friends into the presence of God and they can get, I'm not sure if any of you guys get this, but there's a moment during worship where it's just like, oh, can you feel that? Oh, it's God, isn't it? It's God doing something in my emotions. For some of you guys, um, did anybody like get like a hot feeling on their shoulder during worship? Like, like a hot hand was, you know, like really warm on us. Sometimes God's just in the room and it's like, boom, and I'm like, ah. Oh. But God is amazing, and, and, and if you could just get your friends into this presence, can you imagine not only what this group could do out there, but also what God could do in your friends' lives as well as yours? Amazing. But maybe you don't need to sacrifice your friends. Maybe you do. Maybe the sacrifice could be, hey, actually, you know what? I used to be a bit of an alky. Guilty. You know, I used to, I used to like a tipple or 20. Um, <laughs> I used to like a tipple or 20. Is that, yeah, that's it. Yeah, anyhow, let's not go there. Um, but I used to really, I used to drink a lot. And so when I first became a Christian, one of the very first things that I sacrificed was alcohol. I just sacrificed it on the altar of God. So I don't need that anymore. In fact, um, lately I've been, I've been having a few extra drinks. You know, I've been having a couple of drinks lately. I've stopped for like 
three or four months a little while ago, and then I've had a couple of beers recently. The other day I had a glass of wine and I got really bad heartburn. And I was like, mate, do you know what actually? I think alcohol's not good for me. I think I might I think I might stop drinking it altogether. You know, that would be awful for Laura because she likes having a bottle of wine around the house. <laughs> <laughs> but but I was just thinking, you know what actually, I'd rather not like wake up with acid reflux in the middle of the night. I think I'm gonna stop drinking. That's that's my, my my thought process. You know, I need to sacrifice alcohol on the altar of not just God, but also my body feeling good. You know what I mean? Um, it could be that you smoke cigarettes and you're like, ah, oh, cigarettes, fifty a day. I'm like, fifty a day. That's not like twenty five quid a day, isn't it? That's right, isn't it? Nowadays, but really ten quid for a packet of twenty cigarettes a day. 50 cigarettes a day, that's 25 quid a day down the drain. I'm like, bring that to church, put that in the offering bucket, we'll bloody make, we'll get some Stokes' coffee in. You know what I mean? We'll do something nice with that, you know what I'm saying? Never mind smoking, you know, that just makes your breath smell, no one wants to kiss you anyway. Um, I know, I know, I'm on one of those this morning and evening. Um, another sacrifice you might need to make. Maybe your aspirations need to be your sacrifice. You've got aspirations for big things in business. And God's like, wow, big things in business. You're an entrepreneur. You should start a new church. I'm like, yeah, amen. We'll have some more then. And rather than trying to make loads of money, let's, let's put our efforts into God's kingdom and see what comes of that. Now, I'm not going to lie. Entrepreneurs have lots of money if you use it in business. In God's kingdom, you have none. Um, <laughs> I'm a poor man, I'm a poor man. Um, I have no money. Um, <laughs> oh, thanks, mate. Um, but maybe you need to sacrifice your aspirations on the altar of God. Maybe you need to sacrifice your love life if you're sleeping with someone outside of marriage. Uh, Don's like, no, no, I'm married, I'm doing all right. I do what I want. Yeah, shabba. Um, maybe you need to sacrifice... Like, we have a Bible school on Monday nights. If you're really into reading the Bible, if you really want to get deep into your word and, and learn some like, real decent theology, like, Bible, like, university lecture style, you know, like, university quality stuff, um, rather than picking your nose watching EastEnders, um, then, then maybe you come along to the Bible study and, and sacrifice EastEnders. Sacrifice your Monday nights on the altar of God and try to find a way to get closer to Him. Because some of us in the room aren't feelers. Some of us, in, some of us don't have emotions. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. And I, I'm a very emotional sort of person. Yeah, I'm like, are you alright, babe? Laura's like, that's me. I'm like, in order, like, for, for Laura to know God in this place tonight, I need to come out with a nugget out in God's word that is so new to her that it makes her brain go boom. She's like, I felt God. And some of you are like that. You need to come on Monday nights because that's where brains go boom. You know, that's where intellectuals feel the spirit of God. Yeah? On Sundays, I'm all like, let's just throw the pub in the spirit. You know? And, and that's, just, that's just me. That's who I am. But some of you guys are like, I just don't feel God that way. No. Come on a night when you will feel God. Read some great theology books. Sacrifice bloody, what's that book? Fifty Shades of Grey. Oh, Sacrifice that. Take it into the back garden, set it on fire, all right? <coughs> and you're going to start reading a, a, a commentary on, I don't know, my first commentary I ever read was on Galatians, um, which is just absolutely perfect. It's like, Paul's like, like raw, Holy Spirit-led gospel message, this is how we do life, like book, and it's just like so good. I absolutely loved it, I learned so much. And then I carried on reading more commentaries afterwards, my pastor took the mickey out of me, he said, Darren, you're meant to read those in little snippets, you're not meant to read the whole stupid book. I was like, yeah, but I'm really loving it, because I was also connecting with God in, on an intellectual level, not just an emotional level. Sometimes I need that, and so do you. But you need to make a sacrifice in order to get closer to God. Because you are the temple of the Holy Spirit and a temple is where sacrifice happens. Are we ready to make some sacrifices tonight, church? I don't know what you need to sacrifice. I don't even know what's on your mind. Maybe you need to sacrifice your anxiety or worry. Oh, the Bible says... 
who by worrying can add a minute, an hour, a day to his life or her life? The Bible also says, but I see Matthew 6, if you want to look it up, he, he, Jesus is talking about a couple of bits, and Jesus says, look at the sparrows and the way that they don't toil for food, they just allow God to feed them. And yet you worry about food and the way you look, the way you dress. Look at the fields. Are they not more beautifully arrayed than Solomon in all of his splendour? And yet they don't worry, they don't toil, because God is good. Maybe we need to sacrifice our strife and our worry. Let's stand for a moment. I'm going to pray for the Holy Spirit to move across this room. As he does, I want you to think about, God, what are you asking me to sacrifice tonight? What are you asking me to sacrifice tonight? And if you're watching online today, then ask yourself, ask God, you know, close your eyes and ask God, God, what do you want me to sacrifice tonight? I'm going to pray for you guys. By the way, when I preach these messages, I don't just preach them to you guys. This is something I live out, day in, day out. This is my life. I'm always looking for ways to sacrifice bits of me on the altar of God. Because I want it to be all of Jesus and none of me. Holy Spirit, wash over us tonight, God. Move in this place. Fill us. Help us to know that we are temples of you. You indwell us. You don't take over our bodies, but you move into us. You, you look after us. You help us on our spiritual journey to become more like Jesus. What is it tonight that we should sacrifice? On the altar of God. Speak, God. For your servants hear you. person who has a pain in the back of their head. We speak release. We release the power of God over their lives. We command that pressure be released in Jesus' name. God, for the person who doesn't quite understand or know what is expected of them. Father, we pray clarity in their life. A parting of the clouds of confusion around their mind. servants here. If you are feeling a shortness of breath at the moment, just 
Just take a deep breath, a slow, deep breath. Because you're standing in the presence of God. Just breathe in. for you, he's not against you. Jesus didn't come into the world to condemn it, or you. He's come to set you free. Free from fear. Free from pain. from expectations. Breathe God on us. Mm. Receive His Spirit in a full measure your faith.